years of fine dining experience puts me in a spot where everything that we make on this channel, I vastly understand. So why don't we put myself in a place where I don't and I compete with an expert? This is Damon. Hello. Th yes, a uh, good friend of mine. I've worked with him for many years. He's a trained sushi expert, okay? He understands sushi in, out, upside down, all around. Done, right? Can we agree with that for the most part? Yep. What was that? That's how you make the gear. The more you move your arms, the better it comes out. Is that true? expert. We actually worked in the same restaurant for a while together and I never came to the sushi bar but I watched him do his thing all right and I've always wanted to go up there and do something so now we're here now we're doing it. He's gonna run me through the entire process and I'm gonna challenge him to the best of my ability to keep up with him and see if you know there's a good chance that I'll win I think potentially. We'll maybe see. Not, maybe not a good chance. What do we think that percentage is editor of the day? Ah. Oh. That looks pretty good. Do I understand what's going on? Sushi requires a lot of attention to detail. There's multiple layers. It's about the rice. That's the most important element. It's about the fish, the way you cut it, the quality of the fish. There are so many different elements. People don't get it. Get it in your brain that this takes time. We want to show it the respect that it deserves, and Damon's going to be our shepherd. My sushi mommy. I'm gonna give you a good spanking. So Damon, first step, please. The most important element, can you walk us through the rice? Absolutely, follow me. Howdy, y'all. We're about to make some sushi rice. I've got five quarts. First thing we have to do is rinse all the starch off of it. This is the rice net we're going to be using to make sure that the rice doesn't stick to the bottom of the cooker here. We get about three rinses off of this guy. The first rinse is always the starchiest. We're gonna use this almost as like our strainer here. Gonna lift that up and dump this old water out. All the white stuff has to go away. Number two, the goal is to have it underwater for between seven to 10 minutes. So with each rinse, we get lighter, softer and softer, like a soft ocean breeze. Number two, all right, we got our third rinse coming here. Easy, kind of like a Sunday morning. You can see now that the water is almost see-through. It's not milky, milky cocoa puff anymore. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit for about 10, 15 minutes. It's called a Hungary. Take that sushi rice once it's fully cooked, put it inside of here. We take uh, sushi vinegar, which is rice wine vinegar, heat it up, steeped with kombu seaweed, and then salt and sugar mixed into it for seasoning. Pour the sushi rice over and we cut the vinegar into the rice. Not only does that season, but it also allows the rice to be separated so that it is equally malleable when we actually go to make the sushi. This is the wooden spoon that we use to spank naughty sushi chefs who make bad sushi rice. All that water has now soaked up. You can't feel it through the screen, but you can at least see how dry the granules are. It turns to powder. Take my breath away. Plop it right in. I'm going to add a little more water than I normally would to accommodate for the humidity outside. We're gonna add it on in. If the water gets past my middle knuckle, I know that I have more water than I usually need. And you can see that water is right before my knuckle. Now, unfortunately, because I only actually need one quart of sushi rice, I can't show you the cutting process, but here's a video of Josh doing it. Wow, Josh, great job. Okay, so how'd it go? Did you f it up? No. <laughs> Look at that. Here I am. It's a big ass tub of rice. Yeah, that's what you think, but it's empty. Oh, yeah. rice is done. What's next, fish? Fish, this is a fish. Did you know that? I had no idea, actually. Well, you can tell it's a fish because of the way that it is. This is a Hawaiian amberjack kompachi. It's a Hawaiian what? Amberjack. I really enjoy this fish. I thought you said you'd only broken it down three times. Well, I have, but it's really similar to a lot of Why other Why don't we choose fish, a fish so. that you've only broken down three times to break down on camera? I don't know, man. We're just gonna go for it, bud. Watch for these barbs because they, it has poisson in it. Poison. Poison. The French. Po poisson. French. Poisson is fish in French. Poisson. Poisson. Yeah, poison in French. It's, it's fish. Back check on that. What? Poisson. Thank you. I thought you were supposed to be the expert. Not in French. <laughs> Are that's you what, ready? That's Why don't you want. stand over here? Why? So you can see better. Who's training? <laughs> oh my God. Now, when it comes to sushi, every bit of this fish counts. So we want to try to get as much as possible. First incision is going to be at a slight angle. Okay. Make that cut and we're going to follow it all the way down the bottom. And now I'm just riding that, that bone up until I get to the spine here. But over, you'll break through the bone if your knife is too sharp. I'm actually going to start at the bottom, a push cut at an angle, right? And then I flatten out. Take your towel, you hold, and you ride right up the spot. Come back, cut through the bottom, and you have a beautifully filleted fish. I missed a little bit right here. Let's get a little nervous. All right, you're up. Are you left-handed? I am left-handed. I had no idea that you were left-handed. Really? Till today. That's why I'm so funny. How does that correlate? Well, I'm funny, aren't I? Just drag the knife all the way down. Just one nice slice. Terrible. Wow. <laughs> now you flatten the knife, 
tilt it this way. Okay, remember, let the knife do the work. Yeah, you're doing really bad. <laughs> Try to feel that bone. Oh, okay, I hear it. Do you want to feel the spine without feeling like you're cutting through the spine? Yeah, you hear that? You hear that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, you're, you are cutting a little bit through the spine. A little bit, yeah. Well, you're cutting a little bit through the spine. It's, it's caught on it. Don't worry, mommy's got you, dude. It's really not that bad. It's not terrible. It's it's better than anticipated. See, this is what I do when I mess up a fish a little bit. <laughs> scrape it out. <laughs> so it looks like I did a really good job. And I'm like, wow. There's like oh. no meat left. <laughs> so we learned how to break down fish. Wasn't as hard as I thought, but at the same time, I think it's like one of those things where it's repetition, 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 and then you finally get it. That's Absolutely. About right. So moving on, we're gonna go into makimono. We're making one makimono and two nigiri. So three things total. God, this is gonna be a long day. Roasted seaweed. These are wooden cutting boards. These are old school. Wait, really? It's actually made out of cardboard. They replace them every day, oh, sanitary purposes. Tough. The reason we don't use a dry board is because when you try to apply the rice to the nori, it's gonna slide all around your board. Get your hands damp, a little moist. Collection of water all over. Did you say moist? Grow up. Go! Goose egg size of rice. The less you touch the rice, the less it will stick to your hand. Beautiful. Wow. Uh, and you're gonna very lightly press this around your nori until you have a nice even coating of rice. Okay, you wanna leave a little lip up here and I'll explain that why later. Sesame seeds, give it a little shake and you'll flip a roux. Cucumber, you wanna build from the center. You want all your ingredients to be consistent all the way through. That way every cut is gonna have the exact same amount. Right, every bite tastes the same. We're gonna take our tuna right along. These your hands are like water moving on there. Avocado, this is the hard part. When you go to roll, place it onto that avocado. You tuck everything in and you want this rice to meet up with the end of this nori. So you wanna check, make sure everything's stuck. Jesus. Wow. If you don't want anything on the outside, you press it right now, make it look uniform, turn it into a square, a house. A house? It's like flat bottom. Apple bottom jeans. Boots with the fur. That, now I get it. If you want something on the outside, you don't press the rice, okay? Because right now it's going to be able to catch these beautiful, I don't know who made these. I would literally sleep on these. Press on the top, press on the sides. So like pressing in, pressing down, boom. You're gonna roll it forward from that side and then voila. Get your knife a little bit wet. Wet knife keeps it from sticking. Exactly. You want a much more of a slicing motion rather than either a push down or a sawing back and forth. You cut in half. Wow. Amazing. You must memorize what size the piece needs to be, like I have done. Two, three. And then a trim. Trim at the end, and then let's see how well I did. Wow, look at that. It's done. All right, now you remember that did little- Do you have this avocado here? Shh, no. Okay, who's the teacher here? Huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that little piece of space we left at the top of the door? Yes. And I told you that you want rice to connect with rice? Yeah. If you don't leave that little space, all you're gonna have is a bulge of rice. Somewhere like this. This piece didn't quite uh, connect properly. It pops out into like a triangle shape right here. Yeah. And then this one's like a beautiful circle. That's what you're looking for, and compass. And then you transfer this over to a plate. Damon. I'm not recreating that. What is that? That's my name. Just looks like you went like this. No, I didn't do that. They're so even. Okay, so this is the crunchy tuna. So it's got avocado, cucumber, tuna, and then what's this mayo? Jalapeno. You forgot there's jalapeno in there. Oh, there's also jalapeno That's in there. That's the spicy part. Probably should have had you explain this to Anyway, me. it's okay. This oh. is a white chili aioli. Oh, I remember this recipe. Yeah. I've okay. made this plenty of times. I yeah. hated it. I hated it. Makimoto is out of the way. Let's make our nigiri Let's pieces. make some nigiris. We'll do fish first and then avocado. It's gonna look something like this. You like it that thick? I like it thick, yeah. And juicy. I don't like it thick. You like it juicy though. I like it juicy. All Can right. you just pay attention? It, you're talking. And you slice. Just to follow it through. So fluid. Wow. Follow the angle that you see here. Okay. Start at the thickness that you want. You want to use the whole length of your blade. Yeah, there you go. And turn it. Much better. Let's I mean, honestly, look, look at these. You could hardly tell the difference of these if your eyes were closed. Hands wet. Form it into a ball. You want to be light, okay? You don't want to think about that girl who stood you up in front. That's not how we do things around here. Not anymore, Damon. You don't pick up the fish until you make the rice ball because you want to preserve the temperature of the fish and the warmness of the rice. The longer it stays in your hand, the hotter the fish is going to get. We're going to form, push it in, form like this. Bum, 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 ba, bum, bum, bum. Flip until it gets to the form that you're looking for. A nice hump. That's insane. The ball of rice really conforms nicely to the size of the fish because initially when I first saw it, I was like, that's way too big. It's beautiful. I had no idea you started with such a small ball. Small can balls can lead to big things. Next nigiri, it's gonna be vegetable. That's a fruit. This is actually a fruit. All right, we're gonna start by, wow. 
You know how long it took me to master that? Peel the avocado. Okay. You've done this before, right? Yes. Okay, good. Peeled an avocado? Yeah. You're not moving the knife. You're moving the avocado. Conceptually, that seems doable. Pretty straightforward. Can I give it a shot with this one? Yeah. You got me, gave me the one that has like a broken piece on it. I didn't give you anything. You grabbed it. Does that look you right? Follow the shape of the avocado. Yeah. Oh. Well, you went straight across. You want to follow the avocado because you're looking for length. Push the avocado down. Oh. Ah, beautiful. There's your nigiri piece right there. You can try to get another one. Uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the nigiri, only we're going to do it with the rice ball. Move your hands a lot. Well, what's going to happen, we're going to put it right here. We're going to form it into a square. Flip it. Boom. And that's what we want. Such a vague thing to say. Move your hands a lot. There's absolutely no point in moving your hands around. I was more envisioning myself outside at a Walmart ringing the bells. You're going to take your avocado and you're just going to place it right on top. I don't like this chunk missing. I was a bit peckish. In English, we call this a seatbelt because we're going to strap this avocado in for a ride. When we fold it in, wow. we place it back down. Perfectly sized. Wow. Just like that. And then boom, it's done. The thing that I'm noticing is like beginning to end, every single movement has a purpose that holds the entire thing together, basically. If you skip one thing, it will immediately be disassembled. This is the level of consistency that's required of every single roll, and you're putting these in and out, day in, day out. Not only do you never stop getting better, the only way you really get better is through repetition. Anybody technically could make this Tahiri piece, but somebody who's trained in it can make it look really good and they can make it really fast. And it's just a matter of how fast and how good can you make it. We've learned everything we need to learn. Let's put it to the test. He's going to time himself making all of these and I'm going to time myself making all of them and see if I can match his years of making the same thing over and over and over and over, literally thousands of times. He's got the rice. He's got the nori down. God, you spread it so quickly. He does this every single day. However many, how many of these do you make? Like 100, 200? You don't, uh, have to, you don't have to answer that. Just focus on what you're doing. I probably make, when I work on the Maki station, I probably make at least 250 rolls a day. If I were to guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm fucked. <laughs> I am fucked. Oh. It's that last end really determines a lot. Oh, those are even better than your first one. I to do it fast. You don't even have a board. Time. Oh, and the nigiri, sorry. Clean up. Three squeeze. Down. Avo on. It's the time. 155. The restaurant's gonna be open by the time I'm done. All right, sure, we'll see how this goes. Honestly, when it comes to nigiri making, you just have to do it. Okay. Because you think about it like this. That's what everybody sees. What you just saw was a bunch of jargon. That's what I saw when they were like, just do it like this. I'm gonna go for the nigiri first, considering I don't know how to do it. It'll probably take me the most amount of time. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. It looks kind of like what you did. And then the fish goes on and then you form it. I don't know what the f I'm doing. All right, we'll call, we'll call that done. <laughs> Avocado. That goes right on. Your little seatbelts. It's called an obi. I'm shaking. Not the Juan Kenobi style though. Done. Okay, Jesus Christ. This is broken. It's a little bunch. Jesus. The fact that you keep it from sticking to your hands is amazing. This is the part where you have a lot of speed on me. Okay, goes on. I'm missing rice on a part of it. That's gonna come back to bite me in the ass later. Tuna. That's the glue. Cucumber. Avo, jalapeno. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Then you roll it into here. It's not connected at all. Ay, oh, jeez. Back over. That's all you did. Yep, so. yeah, just quick minimal. Jesus Christ, it's like sticking. Yeah, I gotta wet the knife, you're right. All right, those are really bad. You tried oh, your yeah. best, bud. I was one I, Almost twice as long, and they look Horrifying. Bring his over here. Yeah, pretty distinct difference there. These are really bad. That's yeah. where the reps come in though, you know? You do it over and over and over at a certain speed and that accuracy is like built into your body. Speed it up, slow it down. You're gonna hit that mark every single time. That's the consistency. That's what makes a great sushi chef. Okay, well, I don't think I did terrible. Honestly, I think I did a little bit better than anticipated, but uh, you know, not great. I think I could use some work. Damon, I know you were here to hold my hand. You were my mommy today. Uh-huh. You know, maybe we'll come back and do something and I'll be your mommy. That'd be nice, because I've never made sourdough before. There's a lot of things I feel like you haven't. You've been sheltered by sushi, and I want to take you out of that shelter, but nonetheless- I've never made love to a man. Can you walk me through that? With all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you, Damon. We love you. We appreciate you. Get that out of here.
So that was fun. Let's just do a quick thank you to Uchi Houston for letting us do this in their place, this beautiful restaurant, my friends at High Hospitality, restaurant homies, thank you.